Now we can start the Android application development. Open Android Studio and start a new Android Studio project. Specify an application name. Click next. Click next. Select an empty activity. Click next. Uh, click finish. Okay, now the project is created. So first thing you need to add internet permission inside your manifest. So open Android manifest with XML and add the internet permission. And here we are going to use the Voli library. So you need to add the needed dependency for using Voli. Now open the Gradle script file. Now add the needed dependency for Voli. Now make a project sync. Okay, now the project sync finishes. So here uh, we are going to use a singleton pattern for network transactions. So you need to add a class for Voli singleton. So create a new Java class. Specify the class name as my singleton. Here declare some variables private, static, uh, my singleton, m instance. Now declare some variable for request queue, private request queue. Uh, now declare some context variable, private static context, name it as context. Now here I am going to define a method that returns some request queue, so pub public request queue and the method name is get request queue and here first check some condition if request queue is null, in that case we need to initialize the request queue so request queue equal to volley dot new request queue use the context dot get application context and return the request queue from here okay now we need a constructor for this class so private my singleton and for this constructor we need one parameter is a context variable now initialize the context variable mctx is equal to context now initialize the request queue call the method get the request queue okay now here I am going to define another method that to return an instance of this class so public static synchronized it's a synchronized method and here the return type is an instance my singleton and the method name is get instance for this method we need one parameter it's a context variable here also check some condition if m instance is null in that case we have to initialize instance so m instance equal to new my singleton and pass the context finally return the instance from here okay now here I am going to define another method for add the request queue so public void add to request queue from this method we can add the request to the request queue so for this method we need one parameter is a request okay now from here add each of the request to the request queue so request queue dot add and pass the request okay now the singleton class is ready now here I am going to 
make the UI. So here in the activity main.xml, here I am going to add the login form. So here I add the login form. So the login form contain an edit text for username and password and here is a button and here is a text to view for the new user sign up. So here is the XML file. Here is the first edit text with ID login name and here is the second edit text with ID login password and here is our button with ID BN login. Okay, so when user click the text to view, we have to start another activity with registration form. So we have to create another activity. So start a new activity. Specify the activity name as uh, register. Click finish. Okay, now the activity is created. So here we need to place the registration form for new user sign up. So here I add the needed registration form. It contain name, email, username, password, and confirm password and a button. Here is the XML file. Here is the edit text. Here is the edit text with ID, RG name. Here is RG email. Here is the edit text with ID, RG username. Here is the edit text with ID, RG password. And here is RG confirm password. And here is the button with ID, B and RG. Okay, now the UIs are ready. Now go to activity main.xml. So when user click this text to view, we have to start the newly created activity. So go to main activity.java. Here declare some variables for text to view. I name it as text to view. Now initialize the variable from here. Text to view equal to find it. First type cast that one into text to view. Now find it. Find the view by id r dot id dot reg text now create a click listener for the text view so text view dot set on click listener new on click listener so from the on click method we need to start the newly created activity so start activity new intent main activity dot this and the target activity is register dot class. Okay, this will start the another activity. So now we can close the main activity dot Java and activity main dot XML. Okay, now we need to perform the registration. Okay, now go to register dot Java. Here uh, we need to declare some variables. So first declare a variable for button. REGBN. Now declare some edit text variables. Edit text name, email, a username, password, confirm password. Okay. Now declare some string variables. String name, email. Uh, username, password and confirm password. Username, uh, password and con pass, con con confirm password. Okay, uh, now we need some alert dialog. So alert dialog dot builder. I name it as builder. Uh, now we need the registration URL. So here I use a Jenny Motion virtual device. So we need the IP address of this computer to access the local host. So type IP config and find out your IPv4 address. Here is my IPv4 address. So now define the registration PHP script URL. So string reg URL equal to specify the URL. I use the IP address. Uh, now specify the PHP script file name, register.php.
Now we need to initialize these variables. First initialize the button RGBN type cast that one into button now find it uh, find the view by it r dot id dot rgbn uh, bn rg uh, now initialize the edit text variables first one is name find it find the view by it r dot id dot rg name and now we need to initialize all the other edit text variables. So here I initialize all the other text variables like email, username, password and confirm password. Now we need to initialize the builder. So builder is equal to new builder, new alert dialog dot builder. Now pass the context. Uh, register dot this. Okay. Now create a click listener for the button. So RGBN dot set on click listener. So now we need to fetch information from the edit text. So name equal to name dot get the text dot to string. Now fetch all other values. So here I fetch all other values like email, username, password and confirm password. So before going to pass this information to server, we need we need to check some conditions. So here we have to check whether user fill all the forms. So name dot equals is empty or email is empty, email dot equal is empty. And here is the conditions. We check all the edit text field. In that case, uh, we have to display some alert dialog. So builder dot set title. Uh, something went wrong. Okay, now uh, we have to set message for the builder, builder.set message, please fill all the field. Okay, now here I am going to define another method. We need a positive button on the builder, on the alert dialog. So here I define a method called public void display alert. And display alert and for this method we need one parameter it's a string string variable string and name it as code so from here I'm going to call that method so display alert and for code pass some value called input error so here set a positive button for the alert dialog so builder dot set positive button specify the title now specify the click listener for the button so when user click the ok button we have to reset so here check the condition if code equals input error in that case uh, we have to reset the password and confirm password field so password dot set to text is empty and also reset the confirm password field okay and finally we need to display the alert dialog so create some variables for alert dialog equal to builder dot create now display the alert dialog alert dialog dot show okay so now if the user fill all the forms now we need to check the passwords we have to confirm that the passwords are matching so here you need to check that one so if Here is the condition if password dot equals confirm password. If the passwords are not matching, we have to display the same alert dialog again. So I copy all these statements. So put it here. So here change the message into 
Oh, your passwords are not matching. Your passwords are not matching. And display the alert dialog. Here the same thing. If the click, if the user click the OK button, so now we can test it. So try to register a new user. So now I try to register without filling any of this field. So here it will display the alert dialog. Please fill all the forms. So now I try to fill the forms. Specify a name. Uh, specify some email address. Uh, now specify some username so now here I am going to enter some wrong password now these passwords are not matching now try to register so here also the other dialog is shown your passwords are now not matching ok so it's working fine so now if the passwords are matching in that case we have to register the new user so else now we need to send all this information to the remote server. So here we are going to use a string request. So create a string request. I name it as string request equal to new string request. First parameter is the request method. Request dot method dot post. Now specify the server URL reg url and uh, now specify the listener response listener now here is the error listener so now here we need to pass, pass some data with the string request so here you need to override another method so here you need to override a method called get params okay so this method contain a return type it is a map so here we need to declare some map variables so map uh, specify the data type for value and key key values uh, now specify the variable name params now declare this one as a hash map okay now add data to it so params dot put first specify the key so here is our PHP script here the keys are name email username and password so first data is name now specify the data name now the second data email so here the data available on this variable email now the third one a uh, username a uh, username uh, now pass the data for it it is available on this variable called the username and final one is password password now pass the data password and here it is password now return the map from here so return map return params now we need to add this string request to the request queue so my singleton dot get instance register dot this this is the context now add it to the request queue add it to request queue and pass the string request okay now go to now we can handle the response here the response is a json array so we have to initialize the json array so json array equal to new json array and pass the response string so here you need to add some try catch put some try catch block so now we need to get the json object from the json array so json object i name it as json object equal to a json array dot 
get json object and specify the index here there is only one json object is available so you can use zero as index so now we need to fetch the data from server so string specify a variable called the code string code equal to json object dot get string and specify the key for it here the key is code now specify the message so create a variable called the message a json object dot get string and get the message here the key is message okay so set a title on the builder so builder dot set title server response builder dot set message and pass the message this is the message from server uh, now call the method called the display alert and pass the code so from the display so here for code we have two values reg failed or reg success so now we need to handle these two conditions so here we are going to handle the conditions inside the display alert method so here check the condition else if code equals else if code equals reg failed reg success in that case we just finish the activity the user registration success we just finish the activity otherwise uh, we need to uh, reset otherwise called dot equals reg failed in that case we have to reset all the input field name dot set text reset name field and uh, now reset email field now reset the username field now reset password uh, reset the confirm password okay so now we finish the coding now we can test it so select a virtual device okay now here the application available on this virtual device so here is our database so now here we are going to perform a new user registration so now there is no data available on this table so now try to register a new user here is the registration form enter name enter some name enter some email now specify a username now specify a password now confirm that password now try to register so this is the response from server thank you for registering with us now you can log in so this is the response from our PHP script so now we can check the table so here is the newly added user here is name email username and password okay so now registration success now I try to register the same user again so here I'm going to register the same user that means use the same email address enter some name and enter the same email address uh, enter the username enter some password confirm that password and try to register now this is the response 
the user already exists. 